Good morning to all. I welcome you all to the sixth webinar conducted by the Department of Physics of the Engineering College. And let me now welcome our chief guest, Dr. Jiban Koda from Bangladesh. And let me introduce about our guest today. Dr. Jiban Koda has a professional, very vast professional research experience. His, his research experiences include synthesis and characterization of transparent conducting metal oxide, diluted metal magnetic semiconductor thin films for solar cells, gas sensors, optoelectronic applications, nucleation and growth kinetics and crystallization of minerals, and halide than their characterization, synthesis and characterization of carbon and materials, synthetic graphite, diamond, and investigation of the various types of coal, coal peat, and lignite, etc. The structural, optical, and thermal and mechanical characterization, including of FTIR, Raman spectroscopy, X ray diffraction, SEM, then atomic force microscopy, UV visual microscopy, DSC, DTA, TGA, and electrical and mechanical micro harness measurements, etc. He also has the experience of installation and production of neutron radiography setup using TH gamma 2 research reactor and preparation of gamma and neutrons shielding materials and their characterizations. His academic contributions include as a scientific officer in the reactor and neutron physics division at Dhaka and he is the professor of Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, visiting professor to Canada and Ireland. And he has got so many scientific awards, that is the Bass Award at 1991 and 98 for best research presentation, Young Scientist Award from Japan, ICTP Award from Italy, Coaster Anna University DST Government of India Fellowship, JSPS Japan Society of Promotion of Sciences Fellowship from Japan, then ICRAAS 2016 award by Indian Spectrophysics Association and St. Peter's University of India, and Lifetime Achiever Award from Amit University and Indian Spectrophysics Association. He is the selection board member for Dhaka University, selection board of appointment for Chittagong University. He is the selection board of appointment for Raja Shashi University, the selection board of NNC, NSICT, that is the National Science and Information Communication Technology Fellowship, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of Bangladesh, Board of Graduate Studies for Kulna, then Academic Council of Bangladesh Engineering and Technology member. He, and from two foreign countries, he is the appointment as external assessor for promotion appointment at the University of Malaysia. He is a teaching faculty to the various, in the, in the various countries. One is the American International University, North South University, Military Institute of Science and Technology, University of Asia Pacific, Eastern University, University of Information Technology and Sciences, and Southeast University. He is, RA, he is the Vice President of Bangladesh Physics University from 2018. And he has had many administrative positions and in, he is involved in many volunteer services as the editorial board member for the Bangladesh Journal of Scientific Research, a member for the editorial board of Bangladesh Journal of Physics, then editor in charge for the Bangladesh Journal of Scientific Research from 2019, associate editor of International Journal of Macro and Nanophysics. He is the reviewer for very highly reputed journals like the Journal of Crystal Growth, Crystal Growth and Design, Thin film, thin solid films, Physica B, Material Letters, Energy and Fuels, Journal of Alloys and Compounds, Journal of Physics and Chemistry of Solids, Material Science and Engineering, Journal of Physics, that is the Sprinter, Indian Journal of Physics, Journal of Scientific Research, Bangladesh Journal of Physics, and Journal of Engineering and Science. And the uh, uh, resume, that is the uh, List goes on. He has presented so many invited lectures and workshops 
in eight invited lectures uh, delivered to various countries and the research projects he has got research projects from bangladesh university of engineering and technology university grants commission of bangladesh and ministry of science and technology government of bangladesh and the projects are on nanostructured thin films then thin film based gas sensor for environmental applications high efficiency cells and gas sensor applications then the setup of a spin coating system and the role of transition metals doped on the co nanoparticles and the upgradation of the spray pyrolysis deposition unit and all these are the projects which are received from the government organizations and he has conducted so many conferences and he is the life member of bangladesh physical society bangladesh association for advancement of sciences indian association for crystal growth and bangladesh association for scientist and science position scientific positions and he has developed a neutron radiography facility a crystal growth laboratory he has developed a low cost spray pyrolysis laboratory for thin film in the position and the thesis supervised he has completed four phd 30 mphil and msc thesis some up to 50 and the major publications he has got more than 150 publications in reputed journals reputed journals and then mphil um, phd in progress he is guiding currently three phds two mphil and five mscs international conference proceedings is 30 published abstracts is more than 100 invited presentations is more than 50 he has won patent us patent and he has presented five technical reports and he has authored four books textbooks and now i welcome such an eminent personality to present a part of his research for us uh thank you uh, professor is okay am i audible uh yes okay? sir yes am sir audible uh thank you professor priya murugasan for your kind introduction and to introduce me with the audience all distinguished faculty members of sabita engineering college leading scientists research scholars participants Uh, ladies and gentlemen good morning kalai banakam so first of all uh, uh, i am thankful to shabita engineering college to invite me to give a webinar international lecture it's my great pleasure to talk to you and uh, to meet you all uh, virtually the title uh, of my talk is uh, can i share this uh, presentation here is yes sir is the sharing is okay yes sir okay ah uh, the title of my talk is uh, the nanostructured metal oxides uh, thin films for uh, sensor so uh, first of all uh, thank you actually professor uh, priya murugeshan for your kind in introduction and to introduce me with the audience uh, all distinguished uh, research scholars participants ladies and gentlemen very good morning uh, thank you again uh, to shabita engineering college for inviting me to give a webinar international lecture the title uh, of my uh, talk is uh, nanostructured metal oxides thin films for uh, sensor application we know this is very important and interesting subject to us as the nanostructured metal oxides thin films and sensors are playing very vital role in our everyday life due to their importance in modern technology so before uh, to uh, give deliver my presentation let me introduce first my institution where i am from bangladesh university of engineering and technology is uh, the oldest institution in bangladesh it is about 145 years old located in the capital of bangladesh its first journey started in 80 1876 as the dhaka survey school then became the arsenal school of engineering in 1908 
and then Arsenala Engineering College in 1947. And finally, full fledged university started on June 1962 as Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology. We have a five faculties and 18 departments. So Faculty of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, Faculty of Civil Engineering, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, Architecture and Regional Planning. So there are all these engineering departments, electrical, computer science, chemical, material, metallurgical engineering, and all basic science, physics, chemistry, mathematics, petroleum and mineral engineering resource, glass and ceramics, civil engineering, water resource, mechanical engineering, naval architecture, industrial production engineering, biomedical engineering, architecture, urban regional planning and humanities. And there are six institutes and six research centers. Uh, we are about uh, 600 faculty staff and 700, uh, 7,500 students uh, in the campus. So I'll show some uh, slides, uh, academic and administrative buildings in the campus. This is uh, the, our old academic building. Uh, this is a civil engineering building. This is the mechanical engineering uh, department. This is the electrical and computer engineering department. And uh, this is the architecture and regional planning department. And uh, there are some more academic and administrative buildings in the campus. So these are the all buildings, the few buildings and uh, institutions uh, actually I have shown here. This is the country overview of Bangladesh. Uh, you know that uh, is a neighbor country to India in all sides except the Bay of Bengal. So uh, this is the national monument. This is our assembly house. And uh, we have the long, uh, the river bridge over the Jamuna. We have the longest sea beach and convention hall for uh, international conference and uh, meetings. Uh, and this is the city uh, around the campus actually. And this is the bridge also and the lake. Uh, here, uh, uh, this is the uh, Department of Physics, uh, University of Dhaka. Uh, we are very much familiar with uh, the Higgs boson and the boson particle. These particles are indistinguishable. And this uh, particle was uh, discovered by Professor Shatrindranath Bosch. He was a teacher of this Department of Physics. During his uh, teaching in the department to the postgraduate students, uh, he discovered this uh, indistinguishable particle that is known as the boson is having the whole number of the spin number is complete number. And uh, I feel proud to be a postgraduate student of this department. This is the physics department of Dhaka University. And uh, this photograph of Professor Shatrindranath Bosch, he uh, was teaching the department since uh, 2021 to, to uh, 1921 to 1945. And the key words actually about my presentation, I will come uh, to my main topic, the metal oxides, nanostructured, metal oxides, thin films, doping, deposition technique, and sensing properties. Uh, metal oxides are abundantly available in the earth. There are two uh, groups, mainly the transition metal oxides and non-transition metal oxides. Again, the non-transition metal oxide uh, is divided into two groups, the pre-transition metal oxides and post-transition metal oxides. These are belongs to aluminum oxide, magnesium oxide, zinc oxide, tin oxides, and uh, nickel oxides, ferric oxides, chromium oxides. So these are all these are transition metal. Here, again, uh, there are uh, more uh, metal oxides like the alkaline earth metal oxides and the poor metal oxides, the rare earth metal oxides, so these are the uh, classification of the metal oxides material, uh, the overview. Uh, why this is important actually, these are the transition metal oxides because the transition metal oxides are called the D metal or the D uh, shell uh, orbit actually here. So uh, this uh, material uh, can uh, change the oxidation number, can change the coordination number and also make the colored uh, compound 
and because of in the d shell they have the unoccupied or uh, unfilled actually electrons here we see that these are the shell electron shell uh, and these are the soft shells here so these uh, the transition metals is having the in the d shell is the odd or even number of the electron configuration are most suitable for the gas sensor applications here is the zinc oxide tin oxide titanium oxide dioxide and tungsten oxide vanadium oxide so these are the uh, series of the transition metal uh, we can show here you if you look at this actually this chart here copper cobalt manganese and chromium the d shell is contains the odd number of the uh, electron configuration 9 7 5 3 so in the periodic table here uh, you see that uh, this uh, the chromium the cobalt the copper these uh, materials have the odd number of the electrons uh, in the so this uh, odd number of electrons uh, metal behaves uh, as also insulator sometimes so this uh, the mainly the d shell is fully uh, not fully occupied and these are the characteristics of these the transition metal oxides and these are the beauty to change the chemical uh, bonding chemical uh, reactivity the oxidation state and oxidation number and coordination number so uh, because of this uh, speciality we always prefer the transition metal oxides and we also look for that the uh, transparent metal oxides here because why the metal oxides this metal oxide surface is electron rich they can interact with the target molecules and to change the chemical properties so metal oxides are well known material for sensors and biosensors application due to the low cost high sensitivity and simplicity and also the stability and nowadays uh, the most advances uh, in the nanotechnology uh, research uh, the people are trying to reduce the uh, particle to nano scale because of the more surface area and induce the new effect due to the quantum confinement such as the band gap widening at room temperature also we have the photoluminescence properties so these are the actually the speciality of these the metal oxides films and uh, also these metal oxides uh, uh, they can produce uh, the all microelectronic devices to create the short key contacts metal oxides uh, resistive random access memories in electrochemistry for contact electrodes so these are the metal metal oxides interfaces are uh, uh, used in these uh, uh, families for the microelectronics uh, devices so the our main approach in depositing the metal nanoparticles on the surface of oxide these metal oxides actually uh, were uh, given more atten attention just after the discovery of the mosfet in 1960 because of these uh, metal oxides have the uh, larger band gap highly transparent in the visible region capability of absorbing the ultra ultraviolet light high conductivity and poor mobility producing the electron hole pairs nice electrochemical responses good mechanical properties and thermal stability so th these are the special uh, properties of these metal oxides here uh, the some uh, devices i will show the application of metal oxides the thin films uh, as a transparent metal oxides thin films have applications in optoelectronic devices gas sensors humidity sensors and micro web devices super capacitors lithium uh, ion batteries high density recording media solar cells solar filters transistors organic light emitting devices optical lenses and optical windows here uh, this is the concept of nanoparticle nanomaterials uh, was given by the richard feynman the us physicist and the nobel prize winner and when he was uh, talking to the american physical society annual meeting in 1959 he uh, talked about there is a uh, plenty of room at the bottom and in his presentation feynman gave uh, some ideas about creating the nanoscale machines to manipulate to control and image matter at the atomic scales so then people are searching uh, to produce the nanomaterials and there are two approaches actually two different approaches to uh, fabricate the nanomaterials one is the top to down process and another is bottom to up process for any 
uh, from any bulk material, we can cut uh, the materials into from bulk to into small pieces. So this is process is known as the top down process. Again, from bottom to up is the building of these uh, the blocks like the atom by atom, molecule by molecule, or cluster by clusters. We can assemble these all building block materials like the atoms or molecules or radicals or ions to form that the uh, the bulk material from nano material to the bulk material or from atomic level to the bulk material size. Nanostructures, uh, the important is actually these nanostructures refer to material or structures, at least the dimension in between the one to 100 nanometer. Nanomaterials have several advantages over the bulk materials. It's because of huge surface to volume ratio, high porosity, completely different physical chemical properties, and they are much more stronger, lighter, more durable, more reactive, more sieve-like, and better electrical conductors among many other traits. And there are different types of the nanomaterials, nanostructures, and based on these, the crystallographic orientations, morphologies, and characteristics, and unit cell structures. So we can classify the nanomaterials in the form of the nanowires, nanofibers, nanotubes, nanobelts, nanofluid, quantum dots, nanosheet, nanocomposite, nanoparticle, and nano ribbons. So these uh, depends on that the crystallographic orientations, morphologies, and arrangement of atoms. Here, the properties of nanomaterials you see, when you reduce the size of the material from bulk to the nanomaterial, uh, then as the size is reduces, then increases the surface area and increases the antibacterial properties, is able to increase the hardness, electron band gap, electric properties, magnetic properties. So all of these physical, chemical, structural, optical, electrical, magnetic properties will be increased due to size effect. Here, why we need actually sensor materials? Sensor, it is an electrical, mechanical, chemical device that detects and responds to some type of input from the physical environment. So the physical environment means we are meeting always with the light, heat, motion, moisture, pressure, and any one of the great number of other environmental phenomena that can sense uh, by the device and can uh, give uh, the actually in the instrument, give you the information about the, uh, the conversion of this, the input signal into the output. So a sensor measures a physical quantity and converts it into a signal which can be read by an instrument. So that's why we need that uh, actually the sensors in all, uh, this is also called the intelligent environment to detect the uh, information uh, from the environment. Here, uh, you see here, the spray paralysis systems, uh, there are many uh, other techniques uh, are used to, to fabricate the nanomaterials, stole gel method and the uh, low temperature, uh, that is the call, the spray paralysis temperature is all, uh, spray paralysis technique is also useful for produce the nanomaterials. And here I will show this, uh, the technique uh, which uh, we have fabricated in our lab. And, and I will say, this is very simple. This is a continuous process, low cost setup and a larger scale area deposition, easy to control, easy to fabricate. And overall, we don't need any vacuum systems. So here, this process is actually, uh, we have to optimize some conditions for before depositions. The conditions is parameters like the deposition temperature is the main important part, concentration of the salts, doping percentage of transition metal or any metal, spray rate, carrier uh, air pressure, nozzle to substrate distance. So these are the all important uh, growth parameters we need to optimize uh, for optimum condition of the film uh, or for the quality of the film. If we want to grow, then we have to compromise fast. Second is actually, you see here, uh, this is the setup of uh, the spray paralysis systems here. Uh, this, we need the air uh, uh, carrier gash. This is the compressor we use to push the air uh, to the channel. And this is the nozzle 
and this is the aqueous solutions by saphonic pressure it comes at the end of the needle and this is the nozzle and by the air pressure the all these uh, aqueous solutions are uh, coming up into the form of the uh, small small the uh, water droplet and it falls on the surface uh, this is the called the substrate and uh, there is a hot plate is there and it is maintained actually uh, to uh, make the bond thermal uh, stimulation and uh, formation of the crystals actually is depends on this the temperature so here are two process uh, mainly the pyrolysis and hydrolysis process first of all we have to prepare the ionic solutions and this preparation of solution of uh, salts is called the hydrolysis process and mostly we use that the water plain water to dissolve the salts and then the process is the, called the pyrolysis the formation of the thin films on the uh, hot plate on the substrate and here uh, we can use uh, any substrate the temperature uh, we don't need the high quality substrate high quality the chemicals so very uh, low grade uh, chemicals also we can use and by filtration we can remove the impurities and this process uh, here we use the plain glass substrate and uh, this temperature is controlled by the variac and uh, we can control the temperature and measure by optical uh, this uh, the device the pyrometer or as well we can measure it by the thermocouple here uh, you see the, there are the four forces actually involved uh, for formation of this the droplet and for the formation of the nucleation here is the first is the gravitational force uh, this force is equal to this is the spherical shape that's why 4 pi by 3 and uh, due to the gravity the water molecules are falling down from the nozzle to the hot plate and electrical force is responsible for making the bonds and here the i have equal to uh, q e this is the electrical field and thermophoric force actually thermophoric force is uh, related to uh, trans transportation of the particle away from the high temperature to the low temperature is always tendency to move the particle uh, from uh, in the direction of the low temperature so this is the uh, thermophoric force is coming up and again the stock force that is the friction in between the air molecules and the droplet the stock force is a factor for the particle's velocity and size so these four forces are involved uh, uh, in the in the formation of the thin films uh, over the substrate at a hot plate here uh, we after the deposition we need to characterize the sample and uh, we uh, characterized uh, this uh, the uh, structural characterization by xrd and the bonding characterization so by the raman spectroscopy field emission scanning electrons uh, microscopy is for the surface morphology elemental composition by edx and a dispersive x ray and uv visible near infrared spectroscopy for optical calculating the band gap and four point probe method for electrical hall effect measurement and hysteresis for magnetic studies bsm we uh, employed these uh, all these techniques to characterize our as deposited samples here uh, some uh, structural parameters we need to use in this uh, to calculate the crystallite size strain dislocation density microstress structure coefficient lattice parameters so these are all these uh, equation standard equation we have also developed this uh, the uh, physio fringe method multiple uh, beam interference uh, ferrometry here uh, we have to calculate the strip height and fringe spacing using that the sodium lamp so uh, using these equations we can calculate the thickness of the film this is the simple uh, newton's ring experiment same uh, type actually so using this physio fringe method we calculate the thickness of the films and it is about uh, more accurately we can uh, calculate actually uh, maybe uh, plus minus uh, 5% or 10% error but even then we can calculate if we uh, take the several readings and take the average values next uh, you see uh, now i will uh, show some slides about uh, our uh, thin films depositions mostly these are all these uh, films uh, were deposited by uh, my postgraduate uh, research students uh, some phd students ampl students msc students they did it all these uh, the thin film deposition and characterizations first of all uh, the zinc oxide i will show 
tin oxide, iron oxide, titanium dioxide, cobalt oxide, manganese oxide. So these are the all oxide materials. Uh, uh, I will show uh, the results actually. First of all, the zinc oxides, the thin films. Here, uh, zinc oxide, uh, thin films, uh, here you see this is the osrite structures and hexagonal structures. And the second, uh, this, uh, uh, we use the actually the zinc acetate uh, uh, solutions to prepare the uh, our thin films zinc oxides and uh, prepared at uh, the in water solutions uh, we maintained the solutions is a point one molar concentrations and uh, these uh, 10 to 30 minutes is the deposition time and nozzle to substrate distance is about uh, 25 uh, centimeter for this purposes and you see here the carbon dioxides and methane and steams they are all uh, coming up in the form of the volatile product but residue uh, remains on the substrate in the form of the zinc oxides. Here, uh, these are the substrates you can see uh, the um, uh, access of uh, the zinc, uh, it gives the deep brown color. So on the glass substrates, uh, we have deposited the zinc oxides here. Then you see, uh, this is uh, the zinc oxides uh, nanofiber. You see uh, the zinc oxide is very promising material for versatile applications. Here, the zinc oxides, uh, we got the nanofiber structures and we deposited it around uh, 250 to 300 degrees centigrade and then annealed also 400 and 500 for good compact and homogeneous structures. Here you see uh, initially that was at the 300, then this is the 400 and again, fiber is becoming more prominent. And finally, this uh, shape, you see that at 500, more clear. So we observed after annealing, the fibers become clear and narrower. The average diameter of the fiber is around 220 nanometer. Uh, we calculated the actually grain size here. You see. The, uh, the grain size is the small, small crystallite size that is also called the grain size. Here you see that uh, after annealing at starting from the 300 and to 600, so the grain size is reduced to 20 uh, nanometer here. This is the nanometer scale. And uh, optical transparency is actually uh, is reduced here because of the annealing, we have seen that the, uh, the deep colored uh, films uh, produced at the high temperature because of the access of zinc. And then the transparency uh, is reduced here. Again, the band gap we calculated. And here, uh, see that the band gap is uh, 3.4 electron volt to 3.31 electron volt at a high temperature. The band gap is uh, reducing here. So this is the, and related to the refractive index is also, we can, uh, see the quality of the optical properties of the film by calculating the refractive index also. Second, uh, this actually was published uh, in Crystal Research Technology, it has got the citations is about 160. So it's a very good article. Uh, then we said in our paper that we first observed the nanofiber structures from the simple uh, technique, the spray paralysis technique using the uh, zinc acetate uh, solutions. Second, uh, I'll talk about the cadmium doped zinc oxides. Mainly, uh, you see here that this is the fiber structures at uh, the pure in pure form, uh, the pure zinc oxides. Again, at the low concentration, the still the fibers uh, exist there, but uh, after higher concentration of the cadmium that uh, is broken, these fibers are broken and ultimately form the small, small grains and porous structures. And ultimately at 8% uh, uh, the cadmium, uh, we got this uh, small particle. And this is also, uh, we uh, communicated the optoelectronics and advanced materials rapid communications uh, in very old paper, but is well cited also this uh, article, the change of this uh, fiber into the nanoparticle size. Again, we use the, the nickel that uh, we change the actually this you see at the 5% nickel doped that the grain size is reduced to, to here 11 nanometer. So that is for uh, 
tuning the band gap for tuning the optical properties that we did it using the transition metal like the nickel or cadmium or copper uh, or iron so to change the properties actually this is our main objective to reduce and how to grow the uh, nano structures material uh, from the transition uh, metals so that paper is also we uh, published in a journal of physical chemistry in uh, 2013 uh, this uh, band gap tuning of zinc oxide through nickel doping by by a spray pyrolysis technique uh, this is the copper doped tin oxides here this is the copper doped tin oxide you see here uh, this is the pure uh, the tin oxides material on the, the glass substrates and here when we doped that 2% copper then we see that the small small the hole and the porous structures form so this is because of the interaction of the copper into the tin oxides and uh, then again we see uh, 4% is uh, the copper doptin oxides and this is the 5% copper doptin oxides so the tin oxides is very important material actually for the gas sensors especially the hydrogen gas uh, sensors uh, we tested is also uh, these uh, tin oxides and this is a unique material and uh, now the people are searching the other oxide materials like the cobalt oxides or manganese oxides but uh, the still uh, the zinc or tin oxide is uh, more common for the gas sensors applications here uh, we have seen that uh, again the uh, band gap and uh, the doping uh, for this 4% here the band gap is uh, 3.5 and uh, in between this uh, 3.75 to 3.85 so this is uh, a direct band gap here we got it at the minimum for uh, the 4% because of that the small small uh, crystallized uh, form uh, at the 4% so that paper is also published in the journal of optical electronics and advanced materials here and we calculated uh, actually the uh, direct band gap here what is happening actually uh, in the band gap you see when you doped uh, some uh, uh, doping element gives the extra electron and that uh, the due to this excess of electron is shifted to the fermi energy level from valence band to the conduction band so this is the mechanism of having that the small crystallite size optical band gap below of copper doped tin oxides as a function of copper doping concentrations so this are the main region for uh, shifting of the fermi energy level uh, due to the transfer of electrons from valence band to the conduction band due to the excess of this uh, the doping element here uh, you see here this is the particle size and this particle consists of the small small crystallite size is always whatever we do using that the xrd we calculate the crystallite size or we can say in general the grain size so these are the small small is the grain and as a whole uh, the with the lots of the grain or crystallite size gives the particle size so when we use the xrd actually you are calculating the crystallite size not the particle size just for uh, understanding here uh, what is happening actually you see here the porous uh, layer of the grains compact a uh, layer of the grains so compact uh, if you have the more compact then the less gas can go inside the material but if it is the porous uh, structures and so the gas molecule can entrap into the space uh, in between the grains so because of that absorptions and the porous uh, structures these materials are suitable for the gas absorption material so this is the schematic mechanism for absorption of gas uh, within the small small grains or particles or porous or uh, nano structures materials here this is the same in the same compact here uh, here you see here what is happening the actually the resistance is developed here and what is the reason actually see here these are the, all the three grains and outer uh, size is the absorbed oxygen when these two grain come in contact so the neighbor this a uh, free uh, oxygen and neighbor oxygen so back to back oxygen they try to combine uh, the repulsive force and they produce the higher resistance resistance at this layer actually so and they produce the depletion layer and depletion how this is the size of the uh, particle is the d 
a normal depletion uh, layer or the divide layer, we say this is the L. L means in between these, the neighbor to uh, electron, uh, charge uh, electron. So this is here is the back to back. When they come, there is a repulsive force comes and it produces the resistivity. And due to this, it gives rise to high resistance values at these the contact points. And normally, the device layer or depletion layer is around uh, 100 nanometer and much smaller than the grain size. This is the grain size is uh, uh, maybe about the 500 nanometer and the depletion layer is uh, less than the 100 nanometer. So because of this, the resistance uh, uh, is developed due to the come in contact, the all charge uh, to the neighbor, uh, the grains and this back to back electron uh, charge form the uh, formidable barrier for electron to cross. So here, the this uh, intergranular contact resistance comes from the interaction of these charged particle, charged particles. The height of the energy barrier, this is called the height of the energy barrier, is reduced here again. Uh, then ultimately, it will go to that uh, balance to the conduction band. There is electric current flows, and the cause of the resistance is because of the charged particle mainly. Here, uh, these are uh, iron oxides. Uh, recently, they one of my students actually, she completed this PhD and she did the iron oxide in details uh, on, uh, for his PhD thesis. Here you see that the iron oxides, so this is the pure form, pure iron oxides. And only we uh, change the temperature, deposition temperature. And to see the, what is the effect of uh, the temperature on the, the formation of the uh, nanostructures material. Here, you see the iron oxide, spheric oxide, is it the substrate temperature is uh, starting from 350 to 400, 450 at 500 degree Celsius. And this is the distribution of the particle size here. And mainly the growth mechanism is different at, at different substrate temperatures, which affects the surface morphology of the material. So here, you starting see with the increasing the substrate temperature, what will form actually from droplet to precipitate, precipitate to vapor form, vapor to the solid particle, and ultimately the good addition uh, on the substrate. So always that there is the influence of temperature on the substrate. So if we increase the temperature, definitely we'll find some droplet and more compact and more uh, the binding and strong formation and good uh, the films we can produce uh, just uh, changing the temperature here. So this is a, again a, the 450 temperature annealed. After annealing, there is an the effect of annealing uh, uh, temperature uh, on the film's morphology. Here you see here annealed at the uh, 450 temperatures. 450 is the annealing temperatures. And we have see that the distribution of the particle size here. So uh, we calculated uh, actually the elemental compositions from the EDX study here. Uh, so these are the EDX spectrum, uh, gives you the composition of the element. And mainly the composition of the element is iron and oxygen. So we eliminate the other uh, impurities like the glass substrates if we use, we have the calcium, magnesium or other impurities on the glass substrates, but that we remove that the impurities. So the main stoichiometric of this film is the iron and oxygen. So these are the stoichiometric conditions of atomic percentage of iron and oxygen. So here you see, next you see that the uh, topographical analysis, uh, if you want to see that the three dimensional views of the formation of the films, then you need to study the actually uh, this uh, AFM study. So AFM will give you the more information about the three dimensional image. Here is the iron oxides uh, and at a different temperatures. And we have seen uh, this, uh, uh, here is the average roughness and RMS roughness is calculated here. So average roughness and RF roughness as you see here. And when you increase the temperature that automatically the average roughness is increased and RMS uh, values is also will be increased here. And this is the as deposited, but for the annual sample, you have the better. You see that the main average roughness is 7.80 and 500 is the 39. Again, the uh, RMS roughness is uh, here 49 because of annealed samples, you have uh, the better. So 
from other earlier reports, actually, it was found that the gas sensing material work efficiently, efficiently if the average roughness can be kept less than the 50 nanometer. So the report is there. If we can tune the particle sizes less than the 50 nanometer, that is suitable for the gas sensing purpose. And here also we have seen that the, the average, the grain size and the particle size, uh, grain size is here less than the 50. So we can conclude that uh, this uh, product uh, could be suitable for the gas sensing purposes. Here again, the ferric oxide is, uh, we have uh, done, uh, this is the actually the less crystalline is not sharp, the reflection peak uh, from the XRD we have. So we say this is the less crystalline, but it, could, it can be improved after annealing. So here, uh, the presence of unreacted amorphous agglomerates because of this, the unagglomerated particle and uh, not completely uh, uh, that is uh, uh, oxides form. There are some uh, remaining few unreactive material. And because of that, we have the less uh, uh, the crystalline structures here. Again, this is the equations already I mentioned uh, in my previous lectures here. Uh, here you see that the structural parameters, the average diameter crystallite size here is at 300 degrees 64 and ultimately at 500, we are able to reduce the crystallite size is at 36. So it is confirmed that the annealing temperature is playing an important role for reducing the nanostructures material. So here uh, we also calculated the uh, dislocation density and strain uh, of these all uh, the as deposited and annealed samples. So decrease of the the grain uh, size actually diameter of the grain size with uh, the substrate temperature may be attributed to the formation of the smaller nanoparticles agglomerates as the effect of change of the growth mechanism as found from the field emission scanning electron microscope. So SEM studies we have seen that the agglomeration is less and uh, is more compact and the particle size is also reduced. So increasing uh, should be is the strain and dislocation indicates the increase of deformation in the size of the particle and dislocations in the whole structures automatically. Here, these are the structures uh, of this uh, after annealing. No uh, corresponding uh, other peaks uh, are found, mainly the very sharp peak. It means that it is the pure phase uh, and uh, no other phases are uh, here, uh, only the pure phases. So XRD peaks are appearing and is appearing of an uh, irregular manner as an effect of rearrangement in crystalline orientation due to the annealing effect. So these are the XRD patterns uh, for the as deposited sample for the annealed sample. So that improvement of the crystallite size that we have got uh, after annealing. So these are the size actually again, uh, these uh, 43, 44. Here is a, you see that 45 annealed. After annealing, the diameter of these, uh, the grain size decreases in the film here uh, in between the 300 to 400. But again, uh, due to the removal of unreacted particle and structures, but again, the films at uh, 500 to have the distinct particles agglomerate. During annealing, the particle got enough excitation to move towards the grain boundaries and D is increased because of that high temperature. So. This is not only that uh, increasing temperature only give you the favorable conditions or favorable size. You have to optimize and you have to tune that depends on that the material to material. Second, uh, the optical uh, transmittance is also you see here reduced uh, after uh, increasing that the temperature and incre increase of uh, transparency with uh, in the range of the 300 to 450 may be uh, attributed to the decrease of that that optical properties is related to the size of the, uh, the grain is always. So reduction of uh, transmittance uh, at around 500 may occur due to the high surface roughness of the uh, film, despite having the less, the, uh, less uh, degree of the uh, grain size, diameter of the grain size here. So these are uh, optical and these are the absorption co uh, coefficient tau formula extension coefficient so that we can calculate from the, here you see this, this is the direct and indirect band gap mainly. 
actually this uh, the these materials mainly uh, if you have the highest the electron uh, saturation and the minimum electron from the conduction band are lying on the same uh, the uh, web number uh, the momentum is the same so then uh, you you have the k so wave vector is the same so then you can say this is the transition is the direct transitions if that the uh, k the number is uh, the change so the momentum due to that momentum uh, is different because of that the interaction of uh, phonon phonon or uh, electron electron or phonon electron interaction so so that changes the band gap actually so this is the the indirect band gap so here the same value of the k the k momentum uh, on the same line so is the direct band gap satisfy the condition of the energy and momentum conservation but indirect band gap that uh, have the maximum the balance and minimum the conduction band do not occur on the same uh, uh, wave number or, or this is the uh, quantum uh, state uh, momentum state so that give you the indirect band gap so you, you can calculate when the absorption coefficient is a square and the versus axis is, is the h nu so you can directly uh, calculate the direct band gap when this is the absorption coefficient root and the energy so this uh, direct uh, extrapolation uh, of this straight line to the uh, these absorptions line so you can calculate on the x axis the band gap so this is the direct and this is the indirect band gap here this is the uh, four probe uh, method uh, we need to uh, use this four probe method for calculating that the um, resistivity here this is not the metallic this is the semiconductor material and so we uh, this is suitable for calculating that uh, the band uh, energy uh, gap using the four probe method so here you see uh, this is the uh, step uh, this is the s is uh, the uh, and v uh, the voltage and current and s is the separation between the two uh, these electrodes so easily we can calculate the resistivity and activation energy using these equations we can vary the temperature in the closed systems inside this is the four probe systems is there so we can calculate and you can use this the four probe method and that is also actually developed in our department our students have developed this electrical transportation properties that this is a very important we need to test actually the resistivity unless uh, we determine the resistivity we cannot say this material is uh, completely suitable for the gas uh, absorptions or other optoelectronic properties so this resistivity because of that the uh, carrier concentration uh, depends on that carrier concentration so, so resistivity here you see on a particular temperature or on a particular uh, concentration of doping level they reduce the minimum resistivity so here you see that uh, at 400 degree uh, centigrade uh, we have the minimum resistivity carrier concentration is high again uh, here is the 400 is you see here after annealing that temperature is also there is a core rele relevant actually with the or the as deposited and the annealed samples so we have uh, measured the resistivity using this four probe method second uh, third actually uh, aluminium doped iron oxides also that is all the part of uh, my students that phd work uh, she did it uh, this is the pure aluminium oxides uh, here uh, deposited at 300 so uh, these are the small small the grains uh, we have seen here and the next uh, you see that uh, aluminium is doped with the iron this is the pure form two atomic percent four atomic percent six and eight atomic percents here so we see there is a variation of the surface morphology with the uh, doping of with the doping level of the aluminium on the iron oxides so this is a very cheap material that's why we selected this iron oxides whether these iron oxides could be suitable for the gas sensing purpose here we uh, did uh, the xrd here is this aluminium doped uh, different variation of this aluminium uh, doped the uh, thin films the xrd pattern is there and then next uh, they calculated uh, this uh, the uh, the grain size here you see that uh, the four aluminium percent is low concentration is always a suitable for actually here see there is a 56 nanometer size and here is a two percent is also 48 uh, and again it started the uh, the diameter is increasing here 
So if you see the dislocation and strain and porosity is also the, this part we calculated here. Uh, so this aluminum uh, doped uh, iron oxides here, you see this uh, transparency is in, increased here with the aluminum uh, doping. Uh, and a small variation is there, 6% uh, uh, there, but uh, again, 8% is lower. So these uh, results uh, we published, communicated in the uh, Semiconductor Science and Technology this uh, 2019. Uh, that was the part of his PhD work. Again, this is the summary of the aluminum doped iron oxides to thin frames actually. Here, the homogeneous surface morphology, regulated topological uh, features, we have the better crystallinity, high transparency, and reactive index. Uh, refractive index we calculated, tunable uh, and wide band gap, less electrical resistivity. So this may be suitable for the fabrication of the optoelectronic device out of is the surface morphology and electrical characteristics and the surface uh, properties. We can say this is uh, the suitability of this material. Ne next is the zinc doped the titanium oxides. We are giving all these uh, the material transition metal oxides mainly for uh, application point of view and to produce the nanoparticle, nano size. And you see here, uh, these are the titanium dioxide and doped with the zinc here. This is the pure form and then started to change the surface morphology. And here, uh, these are 2%, 4%, 6%, 8% the zinc doped and we have seen that uh, there is a change of the surface morphology here. So this uh, change uh, will give you the better information here is uh, these are actually, these uh, there are many phases. Rotile anaphase, brocade phase is there, titanium dioxides. Here mainly we got from the XRD, this is the anatase phase and strongly oriented along the 101 plan. So we can say this is the anatase phase. With it, Increasing the zinc, grains become compact, denser, and agglomeration. It is about uh, the 6% uh, the zinc doped uh, gives you the better agglomeration and denser and compact. And this is the properties uh, you have seen here. And uh, you see that uh, the zinc concentration uh, 0 to 4, 6 here is a 2% and 3%, 6%, 8% is increasing here the, the direct band gap material. Although this, uh, what's the features of this uh, zinc doped titanium dioxides? SCM images show the uniform distribution of grains over the entire surface of the film. XRD results show the annealed films are crystalline in nature, obviously it should be, and with the preferred orientation along 101 plan. Transmittance of doped films uh, increases up to 90% for four atomic percent zinc concentration. Band gap increases with the doping concentrations and varies in between 3.5 electron volt to 3.75. Resistivity decreases with increasing temperature for both the undoped and doped films. And the value is varied in the order of 10 to the power one to 10 to the power two order uh, ohm meter. And uh, we can uh, conclude that the, this uh, tin doped, uh, zinc doped the tin oxides uh, could be suitable for fabrication because of that nano size and nanoparticles and agglomerations. Again, aluminum doped uh, tin oxides. These are the, see the porosity here, the small, small is very clear. The aluminum doped tin oxides, if we do it here. Here, see, uh, this is the small, small hole and this, the features is like the sponge shape. So this hole can absorb the uptake, the, all the gas molecules. So this uh, type of formation is possible when we slowly doped and the low concentration, the doping element of aluminum, because these are not a very costly uh, compound. This is very inexpensive. So we can use, uh, we have used this uh, aluminum uh, as a dopant to titanium dioxides and we have got very good features and it seems that these are suitable for the, uh, the gas absorption and sensors purpose. Here is also atomic force uh, microscopy we have uh, done here. These aluminum doped titanium dioxides and uh, next uh, I'll show uh, these uh, copper doped 
cobalt oxides here that is also part of uh, this uh, the phd work one of my students uh, she did uh, this uh, work and uh, this cobalt oxide why this is a cobalt oxide actually cobalt oxide is a promising material in the first lectures i have mentioned that uh, because of this uh, cobalt uh, these are all the suitable material for recent studies they uh, they select these uh, the cobalt oxide uh, tungsten oxides are suitable for the gas sensing purpose and especially for the uh, biological uh, the sensors like the glucose sensors these are suitable here these uh, the cobalt oxides is a p type semiconductor and is the most promising transition metal oxides because of excellent chemical and thermal stability low toxicity mechanical hardness high electrical conductivity and it is used uh, as a sensor in non invasive health monitoring applications like drug delivery glucose sensors cancer cells detections so and so so here uh, these are the slides actually for the glucose sensors uh, even in the tiers uh, we have the glucose uh, the sugar level so that we can uh, detect that level and in presence of these are the uh, the this uh, cobalt oxides uh, that can change uh, some uh, the morphology of this the affected cancer cells uh, these are cancer therapy and for right side interaction the dna of another uh, on cancer cells so that change we can observe uh, this uh, the sensors here again this is uh, the porous structures uh, you see this is small small porous structures is form 2% 4% 6% this doping of copper to the cobalt oxides 2% is a smooth and compact 4% is homogeneous particle size and arrangement but at 6 atomic percent starts at, uh, started to increase the actually the roughness and porosity so here these xrd uh, they have done the students have done this xrd and this xrd results shows that the films are polycrystalline this is not very sharp the reflection peak so that's why that we said this is the polycrystalline more, more preferable orientation is the 311 plan the crystallite size varies from 24 to 29 nanometer with a copper concentration from 0 to 6 atomic percent and minimum size is 24 nanometer for four atomic percent copper concentrations so this uh, the size is uh, varying from 24 to 29 so the minimum is the 24 and that was uh, found uh, for four atomic percent here you see at uh, the four atomic percent is a uh, 24 then 29 27 24 and 26 so this is suitable and that we also observe from the scm uh, image this location and uh, texture coefficients uh, second we tested actually this is a four probe method here these are the actually the film and with film and without film with film we measure the resistivity and then again we use the without uh, with the solutions one time we have taken the reading and without solution we have taken the reading with the film and with the solutions is also here in the glucose solutions and sodium hydroxides uh, is used here just to accelerate the ionic uh, reaction and to contact to the uh, the anode and cathode systems there are two references we use used here is the one is the uh, the uh, reference is the zinc is the anode and this the, the copper is the uh, contact uh, electrode for the uh, Uh, anode uh, cathode so these are the systems uh, we measure here and uh, we see that uh, the copper concentration we increasing from 0 to 4 6 and then the resistivity we measure here the 4% because is a 4% we observe uh, this low concentration is always the better because the high concentration that is the formation of alloying and the more complex more uh, reactions so this low concentration that uh, 4% uh, we got the better uh the result and as this is we used for sensitivity purposes uh, we have to calculate the rising time response time and recovery time is important rising time what is this rising time actually the time taken to reach the maximum 
from minimum to the maximum uh, value of the current. So this is called the rising time. What is the response time? That is the steady, steady uh, to reach that the value. Uh, the response time is represents the sensing of the glucose level. Until they reach the steady state, we cannot uh, record anything. So recovery time again from highest value to the lowest value to come back to from highest value to the lowest value values of the current that is called the recovery time. So the rising time, response time, recovery time, we measured here from the glucose sensitivity for pure, for 4% four, 4 copper doped and 6% uh, copper doped. Next slide say we see here, this is the response time you see here, 1.16 uh, uh, second, 1.09 seconds. One, uh, 0 0.97 seconds, 1.03 seconds. So what is the response time is the minimum that quickly they can respond to the uptake of the glucose, uh, the molecule that is the 4% here is the suitable. And that also we have seen from the surface morphology that 4% is more uh, compact and suitable for the absorption of uptake of the glucose molecules. So the, uh, the conclusion is that the addition of copper as a dopant for optimization of cobalt oxide uh, for better sensing. Copper has uh, the good catalytic activity for oxidation in surface sites. Copper leads to greater absorption of oxygen for the detection of biocomponents. Copper can maintain the electrical resistivity as ionic radius of copper and cobalt is more similar. In most cases, the, the transition metals, uh, they have the ionic size and is more or less the same. Incorporation of cobalt ions uh, by foreign uh, divalent metal like the copper can result in spinal structures which uh, with enhanced catalytic activity and stability. So that is the uh, other phenomena, but simply we can say from the resistivity values and for the uh, response time calculation, that 4% copper doped uh, cobalt oxide, so thin films uh, is suitable and we found the good response time for the glucose sensations. This is maybe the last actually the uh, results and discussion of uh, these uh, the copper doped manganese oxide, so thin films. Here you see, uh, these are the films uh, we deposited here, the pure manganese oxides, and then 2%, 4%, 6%. Uh, copper doped manganese oxides here. There's a small, small, the particles and uh, very uh, fine and uh, tuned particle uh, is possible here. And because of the temperature, that is important part. We have to select initially which temperature is the best. Temperature is best for the uh, complete uh, reaction and uh, decomposed of the samples for the formation of the films. Uh, these are the XRD here. You see the pure manganese oxides, the 2%, 4%, 6% is uh, manganese oxides here. And uh, this uh, paper is also uh, this, uh, published here. Uh, this uh, the uh, spring, uh, spring, spring and nature uh, applied sciences. Uh, pure, uh, the 2%, 4%, uh, 6% here, you see here, these are the 6% here, crystallite size, micro strain, and uh, the density because of this, uh, the uh, particle size also, we have seen that uh, the, uh, is better here. Uh, iron doped uh, manganese oxides, uh, thin films here. Uh, this, uh, the mainly uh, iron doped manganese oxides, uh, here the surface morphology of pure manganese oxide thin films is, is made up of all the granular and agglomerated nanoparticles. And, uh, uh, approximate size is about 15 to 13, 30 nanometers here. But when uh, we doped the 2% iron into the mang manganese oxide, then surface is more compact relatively uh, the first one agglomerated to 2%. But at the here three, the 4% iron doping indicates more compact and highly porous uh, surface uh, and density of these uh, nanoparticle uh, severely degraded due to continuous increase of the uh, iron actually effect. So the size and density of the nanoparticles uh, started to degrade 4% uh, and this 6% uh, is also here. Then finally is the 8% is also crystallite size is almost like the flower shape 
the uh, structure formation of the irregular shape and um, these are the uh, these are the xrd is also uh, these are the mainly uh, these uh, manganese oxides is the structure is the tetragonal structures uh, we calculated uh, the structures and lattice parameters everything 2% uh, film intensity peak is reduced and increased revealing that the crystallite size quality is weakened by introducing the doping but when that 4% is uh, iron is doped that peak intensity is enhanced here is again although these peaks are uh, very sharp but uh, the crystallite size when you calculate it then it gives the uh, the good uh, quality crystalline size uh, at the 4% and greatly improve than other the uh, concentrations these are the average uh, crystallite size uh, we found at uh, these uh, 24 22 20 28 30 the 4% is a crystallite size is better than here the lattice and dislocation density texture coefficient so these are all the parameters uh, resistivity is also here we calculated as uh, the iron is uh, doped so the whole effect whole mobility uh, we measure and uh, this four percent uh, is a concentration uh, this uh, mobility and uh, the whole coefficient uh, decreases with the four percent uh, iron concentration and because of this the shortening of the mean free path of conduction carriers by scattering from the surface and a decrease of the whole coefficient cause the local inhomogeneities in the structure due to the different size of iron and manganese may be the cause and increase of uh, sorry mm, this is uh, here increase of the charge carrier concentration with increase of the iron concentration is probably due to the creation of more acceptor levels with the manganese uh, ions as the iron iron ions uh, want to half field releasing an electron from the outer shell this, these are the mechanisms again uh, we calculated the response time and the recovery time here uh, for these uh, the uh, iron doped uh, the manganese oxides uh, these are the c the blue and the red uh, green yellow these are the three dimensional images of absorption so recombinations of electrons for the globus absorptions. So that is uh, plotted actually, this uh, has done uh, due to uh, this uh, the uh, Sigma plot, uh, 14 soft, where it was used to, to cross uh, sectional views. Uh, in these uh, three dimensional views, the blue, the blue color represents the direct uh, recombination of the electrons, conducting electrons. So the blue color represents the direct recombination of the conducting electrons. Green color uh, represents the recombination of surficial, uh, surficial electrons leaving to visible emission. That's why this is the visible range. Surficial uh, from surface uh, that electrons is released. That is recombination. And finally, the red uh, and violet uh, or yellow region represents the oxidation reduction reaction. So this is happening uh, because of that uh, oxidation uh, of the uh, glucose uh, in contact with the oxygen. There is oxidation, change of the properties. And this uh, three-dimensional image, uh, we can cross-sectional views of uh, this uh, portion. Uh, we can say uh, because of the recombination of the conducting electrons and surficial uh, from the surface of the electron uh, and that is the uh, oxidation reduction reaction for this red color. So these are the image for you see the A, B, C, D, E men, means that the, the glucose concentration is increases 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.4. But for that 4% uh, doped, uh, these uh, the manganese oxides, uh, that gives this, this actually the better uh, the um, better uh, response of the glucose here. And here you see the cross-sectional views uh, may be due to the oxidation of glucose on. The, this cross-sectional views, uh, mainly the dark red, this is the dark red shows the sensitivity of 4% iron doped manganese oxide at a different glucose concentration. When we uh, prepare the glucose concentration is 0.05, that is 92%. Point, uh, 0.1, that is 97%. 0.3, that is the 102%. 0.4, that 
then uh, 0.5 is 112 percent, 112 percent, and one mole concentration of this the glucose concentration. So depending on the different glucose concentration for the same film at 4 percent iron doped manganese oxides gives the better uh, the uh, absorptions actually this the image of oxidation of the glucose. This represents the oxidation of the glucose main. So uh, this uh, preferred that which percentage is uh, the mainly 92 percent point minimum this increases. So there is a rapid increase of that the oxidations with the increase of the glucose concentrations. So this is actually finally uh, I, I will say uh, some uh, the summary of uh, our work. Most of this work uh, uh, done by uh, my students from the lab. So these, uh, first of all, we use this low cost technique. This is the, the spray paralysis technique. This is completely a non-vacuum system. We don't need the, any vacuum. We can use the even the glass substrates, plastic paper, or even cloth uh, as a substrate we can use. This is a high optical absorption coefficient and suitable band gap. We can tune the band gap by changing the uh, surface morphology and properties and by reducing the uh, particle size. So this uh, could be a suitable and simple route for the synthesis of nanostructured thin films for gas sensing and optoelectronic applications. Here, the several different metal oxides uh, systems have been used as a sensing material such as the zinc oxides, tin oxides, iron oxides, titanium dioxide, cobalt oxide, manganese oxides, thin films, and we found these materials are suitable for sensing purposes. And we tested the zinc oxide for hydrogen, uh, and we tested the cobalt oxide and manganese oxide for the glucose uh, sensations. So these sensing properties are related to the material surface, where the uh, molecules are absorbed and surface reaction takes place. Highly dense porous structure with clusters of the crystallites are found in above the samples and suitable for sensing purposes. It may be the gas, it may be the alcohol, it may be the uh, humidity, it may be the glucose. So the all purposes that can be used. Surface reaction, what does uh, actually, uh, uh, what happens actually when uh, these, uh, the, there is a reaction takes place in the surface. So due to the absorption of uh, oxygen, or molecules, the surface reactions change the concentration of the carrier charge concentration. And that changes the depletion layer. And that due to that, the dipole moment created at the interface and which gives the change of the electrical resistance. So the first of interaction of the molecules on the surface interface and creating a change of the depletion layer. And due to that, the development of the dipole moment at this interface, and that will also change the electrical resistance. So we succeeded in fabricating the cobalt oxide, manganese oxide, tin oxides, titanium dioxides, uh, iron oxides uh, for uh, the sensing purposes and as a sensors that can be used. Uh, I would like to acknowledge my uh, students actually. Uh, they did all of this work and this uh, PhD student, uh, uh, Dr. Mehanaz Sharmin already completed uh, on iron oxides and Muslima Jahan is waiting uh, for her defense, uh, PhD defense and these Amphil uh, Rakibul Islam, Tapos Chandra Pal, Rabia Rahman, and MSc Mojibul Haq Babu, Vidan Chandra Dev and Nurul Islam. So I, I uh, gratefully acknowledge uh, their names and because of their hard work only, uh, I am uh, able to show these all this work that uh, they perform in my lab. And uh, this is the group team uh, in my lab. This is uh, the Mehna Sarmin, this is the Muslima Jahan, and uh, this is Ravia, and this is the Tapash, and this, uh, this is uh, the Bidan, and this is Tapash, and this is the Mojibol Haq Babu. So just I mentioned, and uh, that part, uh, actually these are the uh, few slides. I will show this uh, out of our work. Uh, we have communicated in 2020, this uh, Muslim Jahan Babu and uh, Muslim Jahan is also. And next uh, is uh, Bidan Babu, Muslim Jahan, 
Mojibol Babu, and these uh, Mehnas Sharmin, Mehnas Sharmin, Tapos, and uh, these are all the publications related to our work, the oxides material we have uh, done. And uh, thank you very much uh, uh, to the audience. And again, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Priya Murugashan for inviting me uh, to uh, give a lecture. And very sorry that initially uh, I could not connect uh, this actually with my computer. I used that the MacBook, uh, then that is maybe sometimes, you know, interface and connections and some things uh, that don't support. That was my failure, but I apologize to all of you uh, that uh, for a few minutes, uh, the time delay to start my presentation. And, uh, but anyway, finally, uh, I was able to connect and to give you a presentation. And uh, very much, uh, yeah, Dr. Priya, Murugashan uh, for your invitation. And please, uh, we can talk to now in details about uh, our research. If we have any questions, so definitely, I'll try my best to answer. Yes, uh, if I if I can, then yes, I'll be sir. very happy. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. We are, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for the nice presentation. We are getting wonderful uh, uh, feedback from the audience and they have given, it is a very wonderful session to uh, know about the um, thin films, metal oxide thin films. And yes. here are certain questions, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, ah, yeah. Uh, Will the thickness of the film be same throughout? That is the first question. I have posted it there, sir. Just you can see it. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Already you posted, right? Yes. Uh, what is the uh, thickness of the film uh, be same uh, throughout? Uh, uh, yeah, that question is actually uh, uh, we get the on an average uh, thickness actually. Uh, thickness means uh, in the whole film surface uh, that depends on that the decomposition that the when we use the heat temperature temperature on the uh, hot plate and substrate and uh, we use a one by one uh, centimeter square centimeter area so uh, that uh, is a very good question uh, thickness uh, there is uh, some variation it is uh, true but uh, what we do, we take the average, but more or less the same that you can say maybe one part is 120 nanometer, the other side is maybe the 100 nanometer, more or less the same, but not accurate, the same thickness over the whole film. Because of this, the deposition process is the formation of the island on the substrate. So that's why uh, we, we got sometimes uh, irregular but more or less that we can uh, optimize, uh, we can make a more or less a same thickness if we can precisely control the temperature on the substrate. That is possible and more or less the same. Again, uh, the second question, what type of material is a lanthanum oxide, insulator or P-type or semiconductor? Uh, that is, a, uh, it, it is possible uh, for application uh, that is the uh, true. Uh, lanthanum oxide is also they are using uh, the suitable material for doping is also this rare earth metal uh, actually this uh, material and uh, this is insulator. If uh, you see that the electronic configuration uh, on the D shell, if there is a odd number of the electron distribution, then only you can say uh, this is uh, the uh, insulating characteristics. Even the material is metal, but uh, the properties is shows like the insulator. That is the large band gap. So this uh, the transition metal is also because of the large wa uh, wide band gap material. So I think uh, if we see that the uh, electron uh, uh, configuration, uh, electronic structures, then we can decide this material may be suitable. But uh, uh, this material for gas sensing or the global sensing or biological sensing material, I did not see that any recent paper. Maybe it could be suitable. Uh, we can see it actually. Is there any other advantage, techno advanced technology for morphology uh, other than uh, field emission scanning electron microscope? Uh, definitely actually what we do, 
that uh, if we have the TEM, tunneling electron microscope, and uh, this mainly field emission scanning electron microscope only for the surface morphology. That surface morphology is the uh, atomic uh, level and agglomeration that uh, the crystallite size that we can do. But if we go in deep, that is the tunneling electron microscope would be better uh, than for correct interpretation. And uh, surface morphology, uh, normally the molecular behavior and agglomeration formation of the crystallites that we can observe, and but uh, better than tunneling electron microscope also. Is there any relation between particle size and sensor sensitivity? Definitely the particle size depends on that. If you have the bulk size and the grain size is more bigger size, then you have the more resistance, but you need that the porosity. Then porosity comes uh, uh, within the grain size and intergranular surfaces. So this uh, intergranular surface, if you can make the porous structures, fiber structures and the hole or uh, the void, so that will help to absorb the gas molecules or humidity or anything. So that purpose we need the porous structures. Particle size should be uh, smaller. At the same time, if you have the more compact, the nanoparticle without any porous structures, that is not suitable for absorptions. For sensitivity purpose, you need the nanostructures as well. In the same time, you need the porous structures. So the more porous is more absorptions. So that uh, we have to think about that. Uh, can you be able to measure the D and L? Uh, this experimentally that uh, only we can calculate the, actually the diameter of the grain size, that is the, uh, but uh, the layer is the depletion layer or DY layer that uh, uh, experimentally uh, we cannot calculate. I don't know, is there any, a relation to calculate the depletion layer uh, that I, I don't know right now, but uh, it's a very good question. So then definitely there is a relation in between the D and L because of that, the barrier formation, right? And depletion layer because of that in between the two grains, there is a two charge electron charge, they interact. So there is a repulsive force of the same charge and they produce the resistance in contact resistance. So that is important, but maybe experimentally, I uh, don't know right now that uh, the calculation of the L, but D definitely we calculate uh, from the XRD full with half maxima, the crystallite size we, uh, we can calculate easily. For iron oxide after annual average grain size is increased. Uh, average grain size is increased. Actually, uh, there is uh, 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 these iron oxides, uh, average grain size is increased. That depends on that. The you see that the uh, the thermal uh, thermal reaction takes place. So if uh, you have the high temperature again, they started to uh, uh, the uh, much more collisions and in presence of some other impurities and they can expand. But normally at low temperature and a slow process uh, that we can tune and we can produce the compact. But that uh, at a high temperature, uh, annealed after grain size is increased. Uh, for uh, iron oxide after annealed, average grain size increased. Average grain size is increased. You see that uh, uh, mainly annealing effect. What happens actually in annealing effect? When we add the temperature, there is, you see the crystallite size and they started to separate from one to, to each other. So there is an expansion, thermal expansion is also there, right? The bond length is increases there. So that may be the cause that the average grain size because of that uh, extension of that, the bond length with the change of temperature with the annealing effect, that may be the cause for that, the increase of uh, the grain size also. How you know uh, which thin film is perfect uh, specific sensors? Yeah, that is a, which thin film? That is a very good question. Which thin films we need? We need that thin films, which is low cost, easy to fabricate, easy to uh, deposit and non-toxic and very uh, fine uh, thin film. If we can deposit that materials is uh, suitable for sensing purposes. 
So we have to uh, think about the substrate. We have to think about the deposition process. We have to think about the quality of the film. We have to think about the substrate on which we will deposit the films. So these are the many, there are many parameters that we have to think about for suitable means. If, if, if we want to make it cost effective, then we need that the all uh, uh, parameters we have to compromise. Normally the good film and the stable film, stoichiometric film and reproducible film and uh, non-toxic film and suitable around 100 to 200 nanometer size and uh, stoichiometric film, if it is possible, then suitable for the sensor purpose. Uh, is there any choice of substrates for different deposition techniques? Uh, especially different uh, deposition techniques, uh, uh, yes. We have limitations. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chandrasekhar, uh, for your question. Uh, here you see that a spray paralysis deposition technique, we can use the temperature up to the 500 to 600 degrees Celsius. If we use the plain glass substrate, the normal glass substrate that stands up to the 500 or 550. But if we use the 600 or 700, but this is the open systems, you see. Uh, so there is a temperature limit and that's why we prefer the spray paralysis at low temperature. Low temperature means starting from 200 to 400 or 500 degrees Celsius. And that uh, is uh, sufficient uh, for making the good film and substrate Definitely, there is a good addition that the agglomerated particle, nanoparticle with the substrate. If it is the FTO, if it is the ITO, and that is the indium tin oxide, definitely there should be the good addition. Especially for the spray paralysis deposition technique, uh, all these films uh, I have shown, and that is deposited on the plain glass substrate. So we did not use that FTO. Yes, that FTO or ITO for contact or for uh, the preparation of the solar cell, then uh, one uh, P-type or N-type that we have on the bottom. So that is the for contact point of view, that is okay, that is good. But for good addition also that ITO uh, is uh, good, FTO is also good uh, because of there should be the good matching that depends on that the, uh, the phase. So normally, if we can use, that is OK. But uh, we know that the FTO and ITO is a relatively uh, very uh, cost is very high. It's a costly substrate. But for especially the uh, spray paralysis system, we don't need that the high quality substrate. Even the plain glass substrates, then we have a very good addition and good contact and homogeneous film uh, we have uh, we have produced and it is uh, easy to produce by anyone that the simple substrate. And again, and which domain uh, mesoporous or microporous working uh, is more, uh, uh, these uh, mesoporous or microporous working is more accurate. Uh, that is a, a domain is a, uh, that is a microporous is a definitely Meso and microporous uh, definitely uh, is more accurate is a uh, microporous uh, structures if you can look at uh, the SEM uh, structures that uh, is possible definitely. Uh, information, uh, informative session, uh, thank you uh, once if a uh, question, if it is a uh, difficult uh, calcination and annealing, how uh, should, we, uh, should we answer this uh, informative session? Uh, calcination and annealing, the difficult uh, Okay, just uh, I'll see the full question uh, between uh, what is the difference between the cancellation and annealing. Okay, uh, you see that the annealing uh, you need that the uh, you need that the only uh, annealing you can do in inert atmosphere. You can do uh, at oxygen atmosphere, or you can do at normal atmosphere, right? But cancel can. Uh, calcination if you need uh, the for longer time and uh, you need some uh, media also that or even uh, in uh, uh, other media also you can uh, do it but uh, annealing here uh, uh, we, we can anneal actually even in open system here is the film we deposited 
we can uh, anneal the uh, in open. We don't need that because the oxide film. We need the more oxygen from the environment, so it will react with the uh, the film surface, right? The oxygen will come and contact with the film surface. But uh, calcination is a normally uh, you, you need uh, some uh, uh, closed system and then uh, high temperature, very high temperature. But here annealing. Uh, we, we do for these thin films is uh, low temperature for longer duration. Calcination is also you need for longer time. Uh, so it depends on that the material. We don't need that cal calcination for the all material. If we want to make the uh, the magnetic or the complex uh, the matrix, then you need the calcination because of uh, that high temperature. You can you want to remove something from that, right? But for annealing, I want to keep the all the substance the remain. Only the temperature, that bonding and temperature related, they will change the properties without changing the uh, main component to remove or to oxidize or to uh, uh, volatile product without any uh, release of that material that we, we need the annealing, keeping the substance same. But calcination uh, for that, you have to change the many phases because of high temperature that will change the properties also. Uh, selection process of the thin film for making a sensor. Uh, that is also, uh, selection means uh, we need that the oxides films and uh, we have to test it because these are very common that the tin oxide, zinc oxide, titanium dioxides, only this oxide material is coming up uh, late uh, 60s actually, you see. And now last 20 years, uh, the people are searching the transition metal oxides and because of uh, the transparent electronics, they are searching, looking for the transparent electronics. So transparent oxides materials are also searching. So out of that, the new materials are coming up. If we can reduce, if we can synthesize the nanomaterial, selecting then the best and the cost effective and low cost material, uh, definitely that will be suitable for making the sensing purposes. Right. So uh, every day uh, the new materials are coming up, depending on the uh, nature of the material, and that nature the uh, morphology you can change from the structural point of view, from crystallographic point of view, for morphological point of view. So that will change your optical, electrical, structural, thermal, and magnetic as well the properties. So the, depending on that the material uh, we we can select. And which material, unless we detect, we use uh, as a sensor, we cannot uh, say that uh, this material, particularly for uh, this purposes. Uh, where the grain size of zinc oxide are reduced uh, when it is uh, dipped uh, with the cadmium. Actually, there may be the, you see that the, the cadmium is uh, maybe the cross-linking process. When we use that the zinc oxide with the heteroatom other than the uh, zinc uh, material, or that uh, can change the cross-linking and uh, can break the bonds actually. These are all the fibers, long chain fiber structures, right? So uh, these, uh, the cadmium uh, that reduced that the fibers, they break the fibers chain. So ultimately they form the small, small, the grain uh, size actually due to that uh, uh, cadmium here. The grain size uh, mainly reduced because of the addition of cadmium. And that can rule, uh, that can uh, the change because of the oxidation uh, uh, condition and coordination number that change that I already mentioned initially. Uh, what is the purpose? The reactivity is the main uh, catalytic effect. And that uh, the uh, change of that, uh, the uh, chemical uh, behavior and that change of that, the, uh, the coordination number so many things that uh, can influence that the addition of cadmium on the zinc oxide. Uh, so can you suggest uh, any uh, open OIR for calculating the characteristics like uh, uh, XRD, uh, FTIR, uh, any open uh, OIR for calculating characteristics like XRD, FTIR. Actually, you see that uh, the FTIR uh, uh, we use uh, to uh, estimate the the bonding actually the functional group to identify the functional group only because the it is suitable for the organic molecules right when these are benzene alcohol or sulfate phosphate 
hydroxyl group or carbon nucleus material group carbon group so they are connected with the single bond double bond triple bond the carbon atoms with the nitrogen hydrogen oxygen uh, so these are the all hydroxyl groups organic materials is suitable for ftir to see that the uh, bonding characteristics or to calculate the uh, functional group to assign the uh, bonding uh, characteristics right bonding structures and other things but xrd definitely we can calculate the crystal lattice and crystal structure unit cell lattice parameters so this is definitely uh, that is the quantitative information about the crystal formation and crystal structures unit cell structures lattice parameters cell volume everything we can calculate using that xrd but ftir only we can assume and that we can predict the qualitative information about the uh, the band structures about the bonding about the uh, functional groups that only we can detect actually this uh, the ftir uh, lecturer in physics uh, world university he is my student actually uh, they are working and what i have presented uh, today that is your work <laughs> how can you produce a gas sensor device at a low cost that is a very good you see there uh, the tin oxides normally i tested uh, that my sample in japan the tin oxides uh, this material is uh, very common and very common use for the gas sensing purposes so that we need uh, uh, for commercialization that is uh, one thing other in the laboratory that we can sense but definitely uh, that improvement for industrialization that we need that industry uh, collaboration with the industry but uh, definitely these oxides these are mentioned these all uh, binary and ternary oxides materials are suitable for sensing purposes how you choose the element for doping uh, in the metal oxides so that uh, you need uh, that matching is important if you have the uh, the cubic structures then if you select the cubic or if you have the select the ionic radius is important it should be the comparable then only interstitial position uh, or substitutional that can do it or even the lower ionic size can uh, go inside the lattice and can make the good uh, the thermal mechanical and chemical properties so it is always uh, suitable uh, the comparable size a little bit less ionic size is better then only uh, you can take part the rule of uh, that the uh, doping element otherwise if this is the bigger size so that uh, coordination and bonding uh, phenomena will be different so we want to uh, intact the prime material say as the iron oxide only the major prime material mother material is a zinc oxide or the iron oxide but i want to change the zinc oxide's property by doping the other third element so that doping should be comparable to the ionic size of the zinc right or the if it is the mother material is iron oxide doping should be uh, equal or less is normally uh, preferred for uh, having that the better uh, properties how many times say we can use the device for sensing and what is the lifetime of the sensors uh, that is uh, only in laboratory uh, i cannot say that uh, the lifetime depends on uh, all items is uh, the quality of the film and device and that depends on that the film and device so definitely when we will go for a final uh, uh, the uh, fabrication of the device and definitely if we can use the good quality film and then efficiency should be very high if there is a short circuit or any contact resistance is a problem that will damage the device so that depends on that many factors presence of porosity in the synthesized sample good for gas sensing uh, purposes uh, this is okay uh, but when we perform the calcination with those uh, porosity vanishes and uh, uh, then uh, how gas sensitivity profile will increase uh, yeah that is the uh, true actually then uh, this uh, calcination uh, but we must need uh, that the porosity the purpose of the absorption 
so absorption depends on that the surface morphology and if surface is the more porous more rough more irregular then only that surface can uptake the molecules right either the gas molecule or the glucose molecule or the uh, the environmental or humidity or anything the gas so that depends on that surface the calcination that is okay that because of that uh, Uh, purity vanishes removal of the all the by product impurities you have the stable phase but you have to create actually that porosity unless we can produce the porous structure that is not suitable for the gas absorption the calcination is better for uh, having the uh, single phase or the uh, uh, stable phase if we want to produce then we go for the calcination and ultimately for by calcination we are removing all the unwanted impurities material from the prime matrix and complex material so that purpose uh, uh, we cannot produce that the porous structures porous structures is always we need the thermal reactions and then only we can produce the nano structures with the porous structures so that is suitable for the gas sensing purposes here uh, uh, this uh, uh, thank you for a wonderful presentation sir you have mentioned the uh, uh, porous film is uh, good for the how can i know the suitable uh, dopant uh, for different metal oxides for gas sensing purposes yeah that is uh, you see here uh, dr parbin uh, uh, she asked uh, uh, that uh, we are all looking why we are doping that uh, the copper iron zinc uh, so different uh, transition metal we are using to uh, get the better surface morphology actually the purpose is actually the common uh, transition metals if we use those are very common easy to buy and low cost material like the copper aluminum iron these are all the transition metal is very but if we use the rare earth metal and poor uh, uh, transition metal that is not suitable for this purpose that's why this uh, zinc oxide tin oxide titanium oxide vanadium oxide tungsten oxides uh, cobalt oxide so, so these are very common material and uh, that we use and the all the researchers are searching using this uh, low cost transition metal they can go uh, directly interact with the prime material so the selection of this material is better always uh, by uh, choosing that the same ionic size with the prime material uh, first of all and that uh, should be equal or to less little bit is better normally for selecting the dopant element uh, so they can interact with the interstitial side or substitutional or they can play important role within the matrix mother material so that is the phenomena we are searching we don't know that the everything but we are searching so the research is the searching of a uh, uh, new material from the known material so yeah, this is the common we are saying that the research what is the research research is the searching of the new material from the known material so we know uh, everything but again we don't know uh, by doping even the co doping is also helpful for Uh, getting the better properties the main purpose to change the uh, the crystallites properties surface properties and to create the whole or void or porous and that can only create the oxygen deficiency and that can change only by the transition metal because the d shell element they are the unfilled the shell so they can change the oxidation state so because of that properties uh, we always prefer the transition metal and which transition metal those metals are very easy to buy easy to get from the market so that is the main we are searching uh, in our everyday work uh, the low cost material low uh, uh, transition uh, metal those are available in the market so that is uh, the uh, selection but at the same time a uh, lot of series of materials actually you see 
the transition metal group, uh, if we use that uh, 1 to 12, the periodic table uh, series, that is enough for that uh, for searching the uh, new, new properties and uh, new combination also. Uh, the people are also doing that, the uh, code opened element also they are doing and getting the better uh, result and information. So any more questions? Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, again, actually, Dr. Priya Murugeshan, uh, I'm uh, so sorry that initially the starting was not <laughs> good, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, what you can do, you can uh, cut that portion, the initial, uh, when you make the video that already uh, online, but I think that portion 10 to 15 minutes, uh, please, uh, unnecessary, uh, that portion you can just uh, remove from the sure, video. Sure, sure. Uh, and that will be uh, good for uh, the listeners. And uh, I personally would like to thank the Chennai people. Uh, my good friends are there. And uh, when, whenever I have any opportunity to visit the Chennai, that is the pilgrim place to me. And I like very much the Chennai city, the Chennai people in whole Tamil Nadu. So uh, hope to meet you again in near future when we'll have our normal life. And definitely uh, I would like to thank the audience uh, for listening, for hearing and for joining with us this uh, webinar lecture and uh, very little information uh, anyway that uh, I have given to all of you. And this is uh, the learning process. We are learning every day and within our limitations, we have to do what? That is our spirit and motivation. So uh, that's why that I have started uh, doing that the spray paralysis is a simple technique and low cost technique. But even then, that materials uh, I have shown, uh, this very good quality films is possible. Because if you miss uh, to produce, if you fail to produce the quality film, the, uh, no, don't worry that you take again, second run, third run, fourth run, though the cost of material is very minimum, in, uh, inexpensive. So that's why that anyone can use this low cost technique and simple technique for uh, film deposition. Again, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, uh, this is the end of our presentations or any more. Still we have is a 71. <laughs>